Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So for today's viewer requested question, we're going to a question by Naeem Khan. What is a tailless aircraft? I have a question for you. If could find time to explain, what does tailless aircraft actually mean? The term was mentioned in a YouTube channel and I was a bit perplexed as it was referring to the Mirage 2000 and Rafael. That's interesting. Fighters, both of which actually have delta wings and a tail vertical stabilizer. The only part of the tail assembly missing is the horizontal stabilizer. So why are they called tailless jets? So that's so. Here's our presentation, as ever, created by uh, the marvelous Ivan. Does all the work. I'm just the monkey that sits out and reads it. So tailless aircraft. Tailless aircraft has no tail assembly and no other horizontal surface besides its main wing the aerodynamic control and stabilization functions in both pitch and roll are incorporated into the main wing note a tailless type may still have a conventional vertical fin vertical stabilizer and rudder so we're talking mirage we're talking uh sorry the other example but we're talking the tipper, typical delta so because it doesn't have a, a separate tail assembly further aft it's still known as tailless Theoretical advantages of the tailless configuration include low parasitic drag as on the Horton H4 soaring glider and good stealth characteristics as on the Northrop B2 Spirit Bomber. The most successful tailless configuration has been the tailless Delta, especially for combat aircraft, though the most famous tailless Delta is the Concorde airliner. Wow, what a Awesome, we'll have to do a video on that at some point. NASA has recently used tailless description for the novel X-36 research aircraft, which has a canard four-plane but no vertical fin. Drag. A conventional fixed-wing aircraft has a horizontal stabilizer surface separate from its main wing, so I think, I don't know, F-15. The extra surface causes additional drag requiring a lot more powerful engine, especially at high speeds. If longitudinal pitch stability and control can be achieved by some other method, see below, the stabilizer can be removed and drag reduced. Longitudinal stability. A tailless airplane has no separate horizontal stabilizer, as we know. Because of this, the aerodynamic center of an ordinary wing would lie ahead of the aircraft's center of gravity, creating instability in pitch, or static instability. Some other method must be used to move the aerodynamic center backwards and make the aircraft stable. There are two main ways for the designer to achieve this. The first being developed by the pioneer aviator J.W. Dunn. Sweeping the wing leading edge back, so I guess a bit like that there, either as a swept wing or a delta wing, and reducing the angle of incidence of the outer wing section allows the outer wing to act like a conventional tailplane stabiliser. If this is done progressively along the span of the outer section, it is called tip washout. A simpler approach is to overcome the instability by locating the main weight of the aircraft a significant distance below the wing so that the gravity will tend to maintain the aircraft in horizontal attitude and so counteract any aerodynamic instability as in the paraglider. However, in practice, this is seldom sufficient to provide stability on its own and typically is augmented by the aerodynamic techniques described. Stability can also be provided artificially. There is a trade-off between stability and maneuverability. A high level of maneuverability requires a low level of stability. Think, I don't know, F-16. Some Modern high-tech combat aircraft are aerodynamically unstable in pitch and rely on fly-by-wire computer control to provide stability. The Northrop B2 Spirit flying wing is another example. Here we've got the X. This is the X31. I remember this. So this is a Delta wing, and we've got no uh, no vertical stabilizer no rudder what we've got instead is uh, three paddles here that give us essentially full axis 
of vector thrust and it was it was well just go and look up the youtube videos it was obscenely beyond maneuverable it was so good it was like a like a, a bee or a fly it could move fly at any angle next we go on to pitch control many early designs failed to provide effective pitch control to compensate for the missing stabilizer some examples were stable but their height could only be controlled using engine power or altitude others could pitch up or down sharply and uncontrollably if they were not carefully handled. These gave tailless designs a reputation for instability. It was not until later success of the tailless delta configuration in the jet age that this reputation was widely accepted to be undeserved. The solution usually adopted is to provide a large elevator and or elevate surfaces on the wing trailing edge. Unless the wing is highly swept, these must generate large control forces as the distance from the aerodynamic center is small and the moment less. Next, we've got your instability. A conventional airplane is unstable in your and needs a tail fin to keep it straight. So if a plane ever gets its tail fin knocked off, then uh, well, you're in trouble. It just, it just spins around in the yaw. Uh, movement of the ailerons creates an adverse yaw, pulling it out of the turn, which also has to be compensated by the rudder. While the swept wing is stable in straight flight, it still experiences adverse yaw during a turn. One solution is to give the wing sufficient twist for the outer section to angle downwards and give negative lift. This reverses the adverse yaw action of the ailerons, helping the plane into the turn and eliminating the need for a vertical rudder or differential drag spoilers. So designs we've got here. So we've got this Horton HO here, which uh, wasn't that wooden. Wasn't that made of plywood, Ivan? Do you remember? Well, some of it was because they, they were lacking materials at that point. Yeah, which, which, uh, which by accident also made it very stealthy, I remember, um, because, yeah, they're lacking aluminium and whatnot. Um, yeah, the interesting bit about it was it was actually proven the concept and it was so good that it actually managed to beat on the Mi 262 in uh, combat flight. Oh, so I didn't realize it actually flew, so it did actually fly then. Wow. Yeah, the first one was a glider, mm -hmm. which they were towing behind, and then after that there was a powered version, and it was so stable and maneuverable that basically it overcame the Mi 262. Roger, well, man, this is uh, this is something that even today looks modern. You know, it's just one of those kind of timeless things. B2 Spirit, everyone knows, incredibly impressive when you see a Spirit at an air show or something. Mainly, I think, well, as well as the the way it looks, you know, because it looks like it shouldn't fly. Let's face it, uh, but also the size of the thing—they're absolutely giant, really big. And we've got what's this X48? B, is that a real aircraft? I'm not sure. I think it's a NASA's project or something, but I think the viewers can fill us in. It's right. just a nice picture. Uh, we go down here, something I've never heard of, the Lockheed Martin X-44. So, presumably contemporary of the Raptor, I don't know. It looks kind of contemporary for the Raptor. It looks pretty cool. It was another development which they were trying to simplify the whole airframe. More jump. Um, and we've got one down at the bottom I don't know of, but again, tailless. All very good. Anything you want to add to that, Ivan? No, if they want to see anything, they can watch, I guess, the links which we'll provide. We'll put yep, these links in the video description. Otherwise, I hope that's useful and see you later.